Welcome to a new edition of Rational Art. I'm joined at the table today by Amanda Maldonado. Did I get that right? You did. Thank you. <laughs> Amanda, welcome to the table. Welcome to the Captain's Lounge. Thank you so much for having me. I'm super excited to be here. It's, it's wonderful to have you here because um, I love talking to our local artists. Awesome. And, and we have got some really good talent in this yes, town. Yes, we do. And looking at your stuff, you've got to be bubbling up to the top. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> so let's start off with the basics. What actually got you into art? So I've always been into art since I was a kid and um, went to art school, or not art, art school, but I studied art in college mm -hmm. and um, became a graphic designer as a way to make art professionally and still have some sort of creative career. Um, but it wasn't until about um, six years after college that I felt good making art again, just okay. because it was a bit of a painful experience. Um, and then I finally said, um, you know, I don't have to pay attention to the teachers anymore. I'm successful now. I am successful because I've made it as a graphic designer right. in an art career. I achieved I, my goal. Just a matter of interest, can you explain the different differentiation between a graphics designer mm -hmm. and a fine artist? Yeah. What is the difference? Okay. So, um, fine art is really broad. Um, it can be really whatever medium and creativity you want to choose, but it's more for you or commissions. Um, graphic design is a little bit more narrow and it's more commercial based. So you're doing stuff for businesses, for nonprofits, you're trying to like help get the message out and communicate design. So really one is, is doing what someone else wants, mm -hmm. like in advertising, and the other of course is doing what you want. Yes. Although you can still get paid as an artist doing commissions. Oh, absolutely. So absolutely, but yes, okay. That's a, that's a great to know that that differentiation because mm -hmm. really they're they're one of the same, except who the audience is. Mm -hmm. Yeah, very similar. Very, it's a a nice way to have creative expression and feel like you're in a creative field and not stuck in a job that doesn't suit you if you're wanting to do something creative still right. with your career. Do you, do you miss doing the graphic art stuff or are you really happy and embedded doing what you want to do? Um, I, I love this. Um, I also do some freelance graphic design for um, downtown Longmont mm -hmm. and, um, and then I might be doing some for the city soon too. So oh, excellent. Um, I like that my previous job was art director for Simply Organic. So it was graphic design, but also kind of leading the charge on, on what that looked like. Ah. Um, and uh, I didn't care about Spices, that was the company. And I was really falling in love with Longmont at the time. So um, I was making these sort of products and just felt more drawn to being in Longmont and spending more of my energy on it. And uh, so now that I get to do some of that communication work for the city, um, it allows me to highlight the things that make me feel good and feel welcome here right. as profession getting paid while still separating myself a little bit from that mm -hmm. and doing some of the sketchbook art that's like, this is something that's just me, what I want to do. Right. D does any of your work end up in the local galleries? Uh, yeah, I've got stuff at Firehouse Art Center and um, the map here is at uh, Walnut Gallery as well. We're going to talk about that in a few yes. minutes. Yes. <laughs> So, um, and then I have some of my prints at Miko um, Coffee Shop on, uh, right by Chiba Hut on Long's Peak. Um, and then Mountain Fountain um, and Hygiene, the Boulder Bookworm, Java Stop. Excellent. What mediums do you like to work in? But I think you cover mm -hmm. pretty well everything, don't you? Medium wise. Uh, no, I mostly do watercolor and pen and ink. Oh, okay. Yeah, and I don't know if I can show these now. Absolutely, okay. please. So this is my watercolor set. I keep this in my purse at all times. Mm -hmm. And it allows me to do these sketchbooks and do work on the go. Um, and then I also use my fountain pen a lot, which is pretty awesome. I love this guy. It makes me extremely happy. Um, <laughs> it does. And um, what I like about uh, having this is it gives me the chance to pursue whatever is in the moment and engage with it a little bit more deeply or experience it. Or um, if it's a place that I really love, I can celebrate that by making something that recognizes that space. Right. I mean, I, I did look through your notebooks and, and it's as if wherever you go, you sit down and go, 
hmm, and out it comes and you start <laughs> drawing. Mm -hmm. Is that basically what happens? Uh, yes and no. Sometimes <laughs> it stems from like stress or anxiety where mm -hmm. I'm feeling like a little awkward and this just calms me down. It's kind of like um, a soothing moment. Um, but other times I'm just with friends and it feels really good and I'm just like, all right, we're going, or a lot of it we go on art dates. Oh, so okay. I'm doing an art date tonight with some friends at a house. Oh, no, nice. House. Yeah, so it's um, one of these pieces. We went to a coffee shop. There were four of us, and I was like, let's all go make art together, and I'm going to draw this space, and they all drew their own projects. So it was a really fun um, It's a fun way of doing it, isn't yeah. it? Yeah, and some of it's just like I, I'm feeling creative, but I don't feel like making something special i just want to like get that energy out like with practice mm -hmm. and so it might be the salt shaker on a table or just working it into when i have time instead of you know if you're really busy especially if you're a mom i'm not a mom yet but i'm gonna be soon mm -hmm. or not pregnant yet but it's nice to just work it into what you're already doing so if you're waiting for your food at a restaurant mm -hmm. you can work it in anytime you might normally pulling pull out your phone right um it's a great time to pull out your sketchbook instead and then just yeah and then just draw it's in front of you, you and they're like wow that's cool my artistic talent when it comes to anything like that is about that much. <laughs> uh, I, can't, I can't draw to save my life. Put me behind a camera, I'm fine. I teach glasses. But when it... When it <laughs> <laughs> I've got a funny feeling my daughter and my wife would get very upset if they knew I was going to you to mm. learn how to do this. <laughs> I get it. They're both fine artists. Um, <laughs> This is great. Let's let's talk a little bit here individually. Let's talk about this one first. The okay. Callahan House, that's up on Hover. Okay, now this is something that you did out there. What What's the backstory? This was another friend date. Um, <clears throat> a friend of mine asked me if I wanted to go to Callahan House to have coffee, and she was going to write in her novel, mm -hmm. and I was going to... Um, just bring my sketchbook and relax and kind of get out some of the stress that I've been feeling in preparation for holiday markets at the time. Okay. And um, luckily there were a lot of flowers still blooming at Callahan House. It was like in October. Perfect. And um, because Callahan House is like a public building and like a public park, you can just hang out at the garden on their wraparound porch and yep. just have a nice little fun date. So. Yep. Um, Actually, I'd like to put a little mm. plug in here. If, if, if you have not looked around the Callahan House gardens, it's mm -hmm. well worth it. They've got a nice little car park there. It is all built up there now, yeah. but find somewhere to park, have a look around. It's a great place to visit if you've got a spare 10, 15, 20 minutes. And totally free. And totally free. And Java Stop Coffee Shop is just around the corner. And so. free is good, and the Java Stop <laughs> Coffee is pretty darn good it's as so well. Good. <laughs> <laughs> um, yeah, so I knew I was going to be doing a class um, the following year, this year. Right. Um, on... Callahan House Flowers. Oh, it's okay. It's like a garden tea party paint and sip. And um, I was like, well, I'm just going to start practicing painting flowers. And it was a very relaxing, um, fun way to just get some energy out, too. So right. that was in preparation. This nice. is the let's, graphic. Let's I spin use. the page. Okay. So this piece here is um, a study for a commission that I'm doing for Martini's Bistro. Um, they wanted me to take a, a nice historical painting of of uh, a snapshot of mm -hmm. the historical building. That's gonna be unveiling on March, or April 19th. Okay. Um, gonna have like a wine tasting and stuff. I'm most, I'm halfway done with it now. So it's really fun. Excellent. Thank you. It, 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 it just stands out. Thank you. It just stands out, it's beautiful. I also did this one because it was, uh, or did this at this time because she wanted a fall theme and it was like, all the leaves are about to fall tomorrow because it's gonna snow. Ah. And it was like so pretty. It was just nice sitting out on a warm fall day. I also like the one over here about the coffee with the council. Yeah. That's fun. It's something that they do here in Longmont. Every month they have coffee with the council and you're able to go along, meet some council members, mm -hmm. sit down, ask your questions. It's one of the nice things that does happen here in Longmont. We're going to talk about a fun one now. This to me is amazing. Um, this is going to be quite a challenge because hidden in this drawing, and this is the smallest version of it, hidden in this <laughs> drawing are 39 pumpkins, 33 cats, 15 dogs, and six ghosts. Talk about this and talk about the real size. Okay. So um, I made this map um, in October of 2020. It took me nine months 
Wow. Um, I don't know if you've ever heard of Inktober before. Yes. So uh, for anyone who doesn't know, Inktober is a month long of prompts. Every day you do a different prompt and you try to draw an ink. Um, some people are branching out from ink. It's just a good excuse to try and make art every day. Mm -hmm. And um, my, uh, my own prompt that I made for myself was to do a building every day from downtown Longmont. And in order to fit um, the minute details of bricks on buildings, I had to choose a very small section of Longmont. So it's like yes. um, just a 300 block of downtown and a little bit of Kimbark and, um, and Kaufman. Mm -hmm. And um, it took me nine months to finish. I finished it in June of 2021. Oh, wow. So this is six by eight. You should have stretched it to a year like yeah. that. You could have started ink month and finished on oh, ink month. And then you could say, <laughs> but now yeah, I need to have a month. <laughs> yeah. I was so excited to finally launch it and share it with people, though. And because that summer in 2021, we um, things were starting to open back up and I could go to restaurants again and share it with friends and be mm -hmm. indoors, I um, was very excited about having that um, launch because then in, in the fall we were all wearing masks again right um but another part of why this being done during covid was significant is um the feeling of community and connection and the celebration of longmont it was right. really when i fell in love with longmont and really wanted to quit my job as a graphic designer right. and just be be able to devote more of myself and my time to the community right i noticed it's the speakeasy mm-hmm my favorite bar, Tom's oh, yeah? favorite bar down nice. in here in Longmont. Yes. So, you know, we often have our staff meetings down there. Mm -hmm. um, you, ought to come you, ought to, you ought to come down and, and, and paint one of our staff meetings. That would be, del that would be delightful. Wouldn't that be fun? Yes. And if we sit in the back, it's nice and quiet and won't get disturbed. And For some reason, I'm picturing that... Um that uh, image of dogs playing poker on a poker table. Oh, yes. I, lo I love that picture. <laughs> I feel like we can stage it and do something similar. Yeah, why not? Mm -hmm. You've got three dogs here, so, you know. <laughs> That's wonderful. Thank you. Now, let's talk a little bit more about this. This comes in other different sizes mm -hmm. that people are able to purchase. Yes. So talk a little bit about that. Yeah, so... Um, that size is six by eight, and it is double-sided. There's a postcard on the back. That is really neat. Thank what you. What a great idea. And then in here, they've got fun facts here and here. This tiny type yeah, is another yeah. fun fact about the city. That's wonderful. Thank you. Um, and then the 18 by 24 size you can get at Walnut Gallery, um, on my website, um, Firehouse Art Center, or Java Stop Coffee Shop. Um, and that one is 150 for the big print. For the big print. Yeah. So. I bet that pe I bet that keeps people guessing. Yeah, yeah, it's fun. I, I'm like, you just need a magnifying glass. It's surprising the amount of detail you can see at six by eight. You can still, right. like, if you're looking really hard. Many, many eons ago, we're going mm -hmm. back decades now, the company I work for, I used to be in computer-aided design. Mm. And um, the company used to sell um, flatbed photo plotters mm. because we used to have to, uh, the way that you produce a printed circuit board is you design it, you digitize it in, and then you photo plot it mm -hmm. at one-to-one -one scale so you can then go and make the printed circuit board. Mm -hmm. Anyway, the, the plotter had arrived. I'm in Switzerland at the time, uh, Mettler Instruments, and uh, they wanted a test to make sure this thing maintained accuracy across the whole bed. And it's something the company had never thought of. Mm. So I made the amazing maze. Nice. And I designed 10 templates mm -hmm. and I covered a piece of uh, I covered oh I don't know it had to have been about 30 inches by about 20 inches mm -hmm. and we're talking about gaps that are so small wow. and there is only one way through it is this hand drawn no this okay. I, I managed to copy and paste so I, I, I wow. made it so I could copy and paste and rotate uh -huh. and everything would match that sounds like a lot of fun Oh, it was. It, was, it really got <laughs> my mind thinking. Wonderfully tedious yeah. in a great way. It was, it, was, it was so fun to do. But, of course, I'd also made a uh, solutions. Mm -hmm. Okay. Because there's only one way through it. And I yeah. do know of one person that did actually do it. Wow. Because I gave it to a few of my friends and they made coffee tables out of them. <laughs> it was so interesting. Yeah. I want to talk about this one. Okay. Because this one great. is just wonderful. Let's take the clips off. All right. Let's put this down here. 
Tell us a little bit about this. So um, this was done at um, Old Oak Coffee House in Niwot. Mm -hmm. And um, I had just gotten my new fountain pen ink, which is now waterproof, and I was excited to finally test it out. And I wanted to really just draw the whole scene of the room. I started thinking I'd just do like one side panel and then um, just kind of like in my, in my head trying to like crop it and be like, what would this look like as a panoramic? Um, and then uh, I just love drawing people in different scenarios because like, oh, there's a guy reading a book, there's a guy reading a newspaper. And right. I, these are like moments that we can all relate to and be kind of excited about. It's like, it's nice seeing, it's like, oh man, that sounds so nice having a cup of coffee right now or having a date with a friend mm -hmm. and, and getting a chance to catch up. I really need that connection. And I like highlighting that in here. There's so many little moments that you can relate to and just kind of feel that sense of like longing. Um, right. And, and it was also just a lot of fun. It took me about three hours, and it was mm -hmm. while I was on a, a date with some friends. Um, we were all making our own art projects. Right. So. Have you ever been down the speakeasy? I have twice. Okay. Yeah. Because I think that because of your absolute attention to fine detail, mm -hmm. if you just did a picture of the back wall bar, Ooh. It would be yes. stunning. I've done a few bars, um, but not not in fine amount of detail because uh, I ran out of energy. There's so many tiny pieces and labels. That's right. But I'd love to do that. That'd be a fun project. And remember, something like that, I can always take photographs. But I do love painting in person. I know. I understand There's that. There's something about it that just feels more tangible and like really meets that need of like connection right. and being a part of a space. Yes. So... Um, yeah, most of my art and why they're in sketchbooks. How, are how, how, how in often moment. do you get interrupted? Do, do um, people come across and say, "What are you doing? Can I have a look?" Not that often. Really? Yeah, it's it's not too bad. Most of the time, um, I'm trying to draw someone and trying to to make sure they don't notice because mm -hmm. you're people can feel and they're staring you're staring at their face like their profile and sometimes they tend to keep turning their head just away <laughs> and i'm like well like the corner of your eye and not a none of your nose is not interesting that looks weird that's true so i have to pretend that i'm not looking at them and then quickly get like a get the bit get you about want. A split second the moment their head goes back um but sometimes afterwards I'll show them because I yes. don't want them to think that I'm a creepy stalker. And I'm like, I was just drawing you. Here it is. Here That's it nice. Is. <laughs> and then we got this one, which I, th I think is, is just gorgeous. Talk a little bit about that. Thank you. So um, this is a friend of mine. We were playing um, a Fate campaign. I don't know if you've ever heard about Fate, but it's like D&D, &D, but it's like a mini campaign with slightly different rules. Oh, okay. So it's meant to be done in one sitting or like a handful of sittings compared mm -hmm. to like something that stretch on for years. Um, and uh, we were just all role playing and being silly and I um, was getting a little tipsy and awkward and I was like, I'm just gonna draw her <laughs> because I need to like chill out right now. Um, but it was just really fun, like, oh, cool. I like, I'm like inspired by this moment. I love it. Yeah. I, I just think it's a beautiful, beautiful drawing. Thank you. See, even, even though it's, Two colors, mm -hmm. the face is flat, you can see the expression. Yeah. That so is very, very right. difficult to do. Thank you. In, in, along the lines of the art. We talked about this. Mm -hmm. Let's talk about the coffee mug. Okay. Where did this come from? So um, this is a coffee mug that I hand painted. Um, uh, it's originally from a thrift store and then I bring it home and I get these enamel markers mm -hmm. that uh, are dishwasher safe. So you just draw on it, you let it dry for four hours, and then you um, uh, put it in the oven to seal it. After doing the map, people really liked all the different um, buildings, buildings and, and I didn't have the energy to do another map to include more stuff. Well, you didn't have a spare eight months. <laughs> no, I didn't. <laughs> so um, I wanted to uh, kind of take a shortcut and do like little sections. So in this mug, you have the Lamont Museum, um, you have Kanemoto Park, um, and then you have the Sugar Beet Factory. Mm -hmm. So it's kind of a, a way to bring in some of the places that are on the outskirts of Longmont that I didn't have time to draw a, a whole big city map. Understand. And and make hand-painted art that I can share with, um, yeah. with the community. Yeah, I mean, I have seen uh, those maps that they do of cities where mm -hmm. they, they use a very strange perspective mm -hmm. and 
buildings three times taller than they're uh -huh. meant to be. But that is 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 spot on scale wise. Thank you. Which it's, is which is takes some doing. Yeah, it's definitely not true accuracy, but it's meant to fool the eye into thinking it is. And that's one of the really fun things about being an artist is you can you can make reality not reality, mm -hmm. and it's and still get away with it. And um, and also just one of the fun challenges when you get to that point where you're like, oh, maybe I could try this. Right. And that play is so. So awesome. That's good. Roosevelt Park. Yes. One of the be most beautiful little parks we have in town. Yeah. Talk about Roosevelt Park for a little bit. Okay. So this piece here I made during a, um, a class that I was teaching, nature journaling. Mm -hmm. And um, it's just kind of a easy entry into getting into watercolor and ink and um, the same experience of drawing from from what you see. Right. And um, the, the piece that I've made here is... Um, you have um, Manilda, the um, the giraffe statue. Um, this is the one of the pillars. It's the entry to the park where it has the name. You've got Long's Peak and Meeker, mm -hmm. and nowhere in the park is this right. a scene. And that's again that's that fun play on reality versus fantasy. Um, but it's something that you can take and pull together to highlight the best parts of the park. So you've right. got that giant cottonwood outside of the uh, memorial building. Mm -hmm. um, you've got the statue. You have the rose garden, that um, cool uh, like house shape frame yes. where all the roses grow on it. And it's just a, it took something kind of dead and wintry and pulled out all the beautiful browns and greens right, gave and it purple. Life. Yes. Yeah, and it doesn't feel winter. It feel, but it, and it still feels vibrant. Right. So I mean, that almost looks springy. Yeah. Which is kind of nice. Yeah. Before we wrap this up, why don't you talk a little bit okay. about these? Awesome. So this piece here is um, one that I made at the Longmont Artists Guild meeting. Mm -hmm. um, it was a talk being given by um, someone from a gallery just talking about like how to get your artwork in galleries. One of the easiest ways to draw people is when someone else is talking. Mm -hmm. So they're... Um, drawings that I've made where two people are sitting on a couch and they're talking. If someone's looking at me and talking to me, like one-on-one, -on -one, it's much harder because they get uncomfortable or they're, they'll start moving their mouth while I'm, but I can catch people while they're listening. Right. And um, so that was a really fun way to get that in. And um, the guy in the middle, Bernie, um, he came right up to me at the end of the meeting. He was like, let me see what you drew. <laughs> I saw you looking at me. So I'm starting to build a bit of a reputation around, around the artist community where they see me doing that. And they're like, oh, let me see it afterwards. Uh -oh. <laughs> and I, I love that. Um, I love being called out afterwards and, and being like, yeah, I want to show it to you. So. That's nice. Yeah. And last but not least, about this. Okay. So this piece here, I really enjoyed. It was the first time that I um, made a piece where I started with a subject matter, which is the bench and the guy on the bench. Mm -hmm. And then I was like, what if I try to connect from behind him to the light post, to the tree? to the bouncy house, to the people in the crowd, because normally it would have been too much of a challenge for me to want to try. And this time, it's where I started really investing in my sketchbook, and I was like, but what if? Right. And it was so exciting when just seeing that come to life from something you don't think you can do to, wow, I've really created a depth in like this much space mm -hmm. um, where you only have like an inch of height. Yes. But it looks like it's going off like 100 feet into the distance. And that's just kind of thrilling. So. That's nice. But this is uh, from the June concert series. Oh, okay. Um, downtown on 4th and Kim Bark mm -hmm. um, that downtown Longmont was putting on in June. Excellent. I know that you would like to talk about this and I think it's important. Mm -hmm. You're also a teacher. Yes. Talk about that. Okay. So um, my creative business is Koi Inc. Studio and um, it's Koi Inc. Studio meant to kind of encompass more than just the arts and um, the other assets that I, I work on. Um, and I, I love trying to help people give themselves permission to be creative. I meet a lot of people who are just like this sadness and deep sense of longing when they say my art and they're like, I just wish I could do that. And I'm just like, 
I'm here if you need it. Like, I want to help you heal from those experiences and that pain of like, um, every time you make art, you feel like crap about it and it doesn't, it's not a rewarding experience. Um, so my goal as a teacher isn't how to make you better as an artist um, because I have my own healing process that I had to do. Mm -hmm. And I like trying to help facilitate and give those words of affirmation that people need to hear to get past that point of pain. And so not making them be better, but helping them find ways to do it more often so that they can become more prolific and then yes. be more comfortable, create a rewarding, positive reinforcement. And then because of that, when they start having fun, they'll start seeing themselves get better naturally. You just need to keep doing it. Right. So, and I bet I don't want it to be like a chore. Oh, I just have to practice. I want practice to be like, oh, these, oh, what about this? These yes. experimentations, you well, know? The thing is, when you're studying music, mm -hmm. you have to play the same chords over and over and over and over and over mm -hmm. and over and over and over again, <laughs> okay? And I could never, ever, mm. ever do that. When it comes to art like yeah. this, yeah. the subject is wide open. Exactly. The problem I have is whenever I try and do art like this, it looks like it was done by a one-year-old with a crayon. Mm -hmm. I am absolutely useless. <laughs> useless. Put me behind a camera. Yeah. I'm great. Yeah. But this, it's way yeah. over my head. And I, it's, it's part nurturing mm -hmm. environment and part simple lessons and tools. Right. So, you know, I don't expect you to be able to take amazing photos on your phone. You right. know, it's it's trying to give them a few tools. So, and, and I did a class last night and that aha moment, three of the women were like, oh, I get it. Oh, I, nice. I really want to, I want to keep experimenting with this. I can't wait to take it home. I can't wait to show someone else. And I can't wait to keep playing with watercolor. And that, that's the moment that I look for is giving you just enough mm -hmm. um, enough tools so that you feel excited about experimenting, you know, just just enough. And then you'll start pushing it. You'll start trying, how do I get past right. here and do and, that? And, and as a teacher, when you hear that, mm -hmm. that's got to be, yes, we did it. Yes, it's such a great feeling. It's I'm like, wonderful. oh, yay, I'm succeeding as a teacher. <laughs> so. Amanda, thank you so, thank so you, much Nigel. for coming in. It's been an absolute pleasure talking Same. to you. Do you have any final words? Um, Obviously not. Yeah, be <laughs> awesome and love art. I'm Nigel Abe, your host. This is Rational Art, coming to you from the Captain's Lounge Studios. Thank you. Goodbye.